I'm very happy to open the first technical session with a slightly controversial title. Uh, we're talking about Go in the era of AI, and I'm telling you all Go players not to trust AI winright. So, before we see what I mean by this, um, a small recap of AI Go career. So, AI learned to play Go, um, if you're talking about 19 by 19 boards, approximately in 2003, when it reached 20 to 15 Q level. There were some very good improvements in 2007, thanks to algorithms that we know, um, that everybody knows now, which are Monte Carlo tree search, with which AI reached one band, and of course we are all aware that in 2016, AI defeated the top human players. And this is thanks to new algorithms, which mostly rely on deep learning and reinforcement learning. And what, what I want to focus in, in this presentation is not about AI as a Go player, it's more about AI as a teacher. Because nowadays, we use AI as a teacher for all Go players, from Q rank until professional level. So that's the, the context of my, of my presentation. Nowadays, uh, if you're a Go player, for sure you're analyzing your games with artificial intelligence. So you may have different websites, different interfaces. I'm presenting one of them here, which is Catrain. You see the... yeah, you can see the cursor. So the, the interfaces are quite similar. You always have the board position. Uh, you will have the last move played, the next move and then you will have some information on the, on the game uh, statistics computed by AI. So here, for instance, we're looking at a game between Wu uh, Zhehao and Xin Jinseo. So here Xin Jinseo is playing white. And you have some indicators, uh, mostly the win rate here, that I call the AI win rate, and the score. So here the AI is telling us white is leading by 6 points, 6.4 points, and the win rate is 85%. What does this mean? Score, I think we, we all have an idea of what score means. It's the difference in number of points between the two players. AI win rate, on the other hand, is something that was used to train the AI. What it means is, is that if the AI plays 1,000 games against itself, starting from this board position, it will win 85% of the time. That's what AI win rate means. My question for you is, what is Shinji's win rate? We know it's very high, it's probably very close to AI win rate because Shin Jin Seo is a very strong player. What about another player? Let's say one done amateur level player. What is his win rate in this position? You're around 100, you're six points ahead. What can you expect in terms of winning probability? So to, to try to get this idea, what is the win rate of a human in this position is basically the objective of my work. So I want to develop a method to compute not the AI win rate, but what the win rate is for a human, for myself when I review the games, for instance. So the outcome of this presentation would be as follows. I start um, showing you how I built a database of analyzed Go games. Next, I will show you how I compute the human win rate using this database. Um, and then I derive the formula Hopefully I want just a simple formula that we can use, for example, on websites or on softwares for analysis, so that anyone can access this human win rate metric. And then I see how this can help us um, maybe learning better about Go and maybe making better decisions while we are playing. Uh, so first, what I will do is I will rely on a statistical analysis for this work. So what I do need to start with is a large, as large as possible database. In this work, I use two databases. Uh, the first one comes from the FoxGo server. So there is actually online a database of 
21 million games played on Foxco server between 2014 and 2019 with ranks ranging from 18Q to uh, 9 -line. And I also want to compare, so these are only online games, and I want to compare with real tournament games, so I'm using a database of professional games, go for go which has lots, uh, more than 100,000 games. I, I, I'm not analyzing this 21 million game, that's way too much, so I have to do a small sampling, and I put everything in a, uh, in an AI analysis tool, namely Catago. So out of these two databases, I extract 500,000 games, uh, 12Q to 9P, and the runtime for this is around one month on a single laptop. So it's, it's big, but it's not, uh, I didn't need a big cluster or something like this. Uh, here are detailed settings about all the games I analyzed, all the uh, settings are in the paper, and why I'm putting emphasis on this is that this database of half a million games, I released it online under open source li license, so anyone can use it for research or any purposes. Uh, you can access all of this game on, on this uh, GitLab account. The link is in the paper as well. Okay, so now I do have a large database, half a million games, play online and professional games as well. Um, how do we compute human win rate from this? So I have board position, and at each move for each game, I have the score and the AI win rate, the two metrics I presented you in the, in the first slide. So first, I do a sampling. I take one rank, so for instance, I will first look at one done players, and one move number, uh, for instance, move 100. And this gives me a, a, a smaller subset of the database, so around 30,000 games. So I have 30,000 board position, each with a score. What I can do is I can plot an histogram of the score for all those games. And that's what you see on the blue curve. So, of course, there is a very small ratio of games where the score difference would be 100 points, and a lot of games where the score difference is around zero, which means the game is even. And all the 30,000 games, they're represented by the blue curve. Now I take another subset of this sample. I look only at the games where black won the game. So here when the score is positive, it means black is leading the game. And when the score is negative, white is leading the game. If I take only the games where black won in the end, and I know this because it's recorded in my game database, I have the orange curve which is put in here. So, as you can expect, if you're behind by 100 points at move 100, you have basically no chance of winning the game. However, if you are uh, ahead by 100 points, the percentage of won games is very high. And that's basically our win rate, right? In frequency statistics, our win rate can be defined as the number of games I win over the number of games I play uh, in total. So from this curve, each score win here, I basically take the number of wins divided by the number of games, and I get one point on this win rate curve. And this is the win rate curve for one strength, here one done player, and that one move number, one result. Interestingly, when you do this, you don't have a symmetric curve, which means that the curve is slightly different for white and for black. There can be lots of uh, reasons for this that I detail in the paper, in my case, I don't want to have a different indicator if you're playing black and you're playing white. The difference is very small, so what I do is I average both curves, and I get one nice symmetric win rate curve. And because it's symmetric, we can only look at the upper right quadrant where all the information is. So, in my presentation now, you'll see lots of plots like this, where we look at the win rate on the left, uh, plotted against the score difference, and the biggest score lead you have, the biggest win rate you have. Alright? 
So, I told you I have a big enough uh, database. How do I know that? And how do I know that my methodology is good enough? So, I, I had to, to do some analysis, more, detailed, uh, more details are in the paper. Uh, for instance, how many visits or playouts do I use to analyze the game? Most of the games, they are used, they are analyzed with five visits, which means that at each move, we only evaluate five more positions, which is very, very, very small. If you're used to analyze your game with AI, you usually rely on 500 for normal games, and you can go up to 2,000 or to 10,000 for complicated situations. Here, I have a big advantage in that I'm only interested in the score, and I have a large database. And each time the score overshoots, it may undershoot on a different small position. So the errors will cancel each other. At least, that was my hypothesis. And to evaluate this hypothesis, I run on a smaller subset two different analyses, five visits that you see in blue, and the orange curve is for 500 visits. And you can see that we get the same results, and we don't need more visits, more playouts, uh, to have information on win rates. So it's better to have low number of visits and big database than a small database with deeper analysis. And the other important uh, parameter is, of course, the database size. So this small sample, I told you, it's about 30,000 games. So here I, I uh, plot for three different sizes, 6,000 games. You have the green curve. You can see it's pretty noisy. The, the trend is pretty good. Like, if you only have 6,000 games, you, you, have, you have a decent results, but it's, it's pretty noisy. And then when you get to a higher number of games, you have a nice uh, smooth win rate curve. So in, the, in my work, I will use at least 24,000 games for uh, the win rate curves. And each time we have also a, a confidence interval in, in light blue, which gives you an idea of the uncertainty. So it's around plus or minus 2% on the win rate. So we can get pretty accurate uh, predictions here. Okay, so now some results. Uh, so I, I managed to compute a human win rate. What does it look like? So first I want to compare it with AI win rate, which is this blue curve, which means how confident the AI is winning the game. So here we're looking at move 50, which can be defined as the end of the opening, starting of the middle game. And you can see that AI outperforms professional players. Professional players are in orange here from one down to nine down professional. Uh, so there is still a big gap in them. And of course, professional players really uh, outperform amateur players. Uh, so the green curve is for seven down fox players and the red curve for one down fox players. So what these pictures really show you is the influence of strengths on win rate. If you have a 10 point lead at the end of the opening, the AI already has more than 90% chance of winning. If you're a one down fox player, you're, you're slightly above 60, which means almost like an even day. Okay? And then, depending on your strengths, you will have different value of win rate. But strengths is not the only factor. Uh, as you can guess, when the game is progressing towards its end, it's getting more and more difficult to overturn uh, the result. So the second important parameter is the move number. So here I'm taking the same player strengths and I'm now looking at the win rate curves at move 200. So now we are uh, entering uh, at least the, the end game. We're pretty close from the end. Interestingly, you can see that professional players, they have a, a win rate which is almost identical to AI which means they play endgame optimal. The, the, they have the same strengths than AI in the endgame. <coughs> and of course, amateur players have lower win rates, uh, uh, but higher than during the open. So these are the two main parameters which are driving win rates. Move number, which is true for everyone, AI or human, and then the strengths, which is inherent to our uh, human players. What I now want to do is to have a simple formula so that people can use it in softwares uh, or, or uh, 
to compute a win rate just based on these two parameters identified. So I know win rate has a sigmoid curve, an S-shaped curve, and I use an algebraic sigmoid function here, and I have two parameters, gamma and the power exponent k here, which are two parameters I can fit according to data. So I just give this to an optimization, optimization algorithm. All my data points are in uh, other circles. On the left here, I'm looking at the influence of the strengths, the rank, from 1 dan to 9 dan. And we can see that with one formula, we have a pretty good fit for all the data. And on the right, I showed you the influence of the move number. On the right, I showed the full curve, not because there is more information, but I think it's easier to grasp that the shape of the curve will change. It's almost linear at the beginning of the game, the blue curve. And when you reach the end game, the green curve, it's, it's a S, almost like a square shape. And I need these two parameters to take into account the, the shape of my single function. So if you want to use this uh, formula, you have uh, two places where you can find them. In the paper, of course, uh, you have all the graphs. You can zoom in. They should be pretty nice quality in the paper. And there is a small table as well to give an idea on uh, some level uh, of, of uh, win rate. And, and hopefully you can use as well this formula. Once again, all the parameters are in the paper. And this can be super easily implemented on any interface, uh, website, or, or software. Um, okay, we have a, a human win rate. What do we do with this? Is this useful? Um, what I want to use it for is uh, for analysis. Nowadays, we use softwares that classify our moves between best move, good move, mistakes, blunder. And to do this, they rely only on score and player's rank. My question for you is, if one move gives me minus 10 points, but just minus 2% of the rate, is it a blunder? Maybe I'm choosing a situation which is simpler on the board. And this will, be, this will lead me to a more secure win that may be something which is more optimal in terms of score, but not in terms of win rate. So what I propose is that now we can use human win rate and score together to have a more accurate description of, uh, of if we are leading the game or not. A second part where we can use this is in tournaments. So if you're playing a tournament, you have four uh, games to play in two days. You want to play as long as possible and not to resign to make sure that you don't miss an opportunity of winning a game. But if the game is completely lost, if you have less than 1% chance of winning the game, maybe you want to resign and take some time to rest for the coming game uh, in the afternoon. But what does 1% mean in terms of, of score? Well, it depends on your rank, and thanks to this human win rate, you can now adjust and tell between the score difference and the move number what is your winning probability. Um, to summarize very quickly what I did in this work, so I built this large database of half a million games, all analyzed with AI and all available online for research or any project. I developed a formula that we can use, which worked very well in my case, so from 12Q to 9 players and up to move 200. And I proposed some ideas to, to enhance both the learning and the decision making. Uh, there are a lot of perspectives about this work, a lot of future works that we can do. One that I would like to try is that we can have more information than just the score. Maybe from a board position we can evaluate what is the complexity of the game. If there is a lot of fights going on, there are more chances of overturning the game than if you're already playing uh, the end game. So this can be some ideas for future work. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to take questions at the end of the technical session. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you.